start with the first uh, presentation um, by uh, Agostino Boldera. Uh, his uh, title of the talk is uh, Intercultural and Multicultural Education in the Age of Digitalization. Okay. Thanks. Please join me to welcome him. Thank you so much. So you have 30 minutes, but then maybe 25 minutes, and then uh, we'll give you some. Okay. And then five minutes for a uh, short Q&A. Perhaps I can talk for me. Okay, not, uh, so. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Stone, and uh, thank you very much, Dr. Mu, for the invitation. I feel uh, really honored to be here. This is my third time, so that I am especially, I feel especially honored. So the topic of my presentation is, uh, perhaps I, I talk from here as easy. It's about intercultural and multicultural education. It's okay for the sound? Or we can switch? Or it's not allowed for you? It's okay. Okay. Maybe a little bit in the in the age of no, I think it's not so good. It's better with this one. Yeah. It's better now? Yeah. Yeah, no. In the age of uh, digitalization. So you will see, I will talk mainly on intercultural, multicultural concept. So this is uh, Verona, the city where I came from. We say it's the city not of uh, brain, of head. Instead, it's a city of love. So emotion and feelings are very important in all part of the world. This is Romeo and Julia, you see? <laughs> 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 this is the balcony. Verona is most foremost not because of the university, <laughs> like so, but because of Romeo and Juliet. Romeo, Romeo and Juliet. So I will talk very shortly first about the changes in crisis in time of globalization today. Then a little bit about artificial intelligence. We had an excellent talk this morning uh, and so generative tools. And then the answer: education should be the answer. So we, the need of education, and the question is, which kind of education do we need? And you know? do we go back to the fourth form of education, or the, should be multicultural, intercultural? All over the world, there is a discussion. And if I will have time, I will present also a model uh, related to intercultural competences. How can we apply this uh, concept? So first of all, uh, regard the church. The changes, I um, already published a book with um, uh, Professor Bauman, Sigmund Bauman. He was uh, 93 years old and, uh, so it was, uh, and is very well known as a sociologist. And we tried together so to reflect about the challenges in our time. And in short, those are the main challenges that we see, of course, not the only one. Globalization, planetary area, Heidegger, we have said we are all connected, global village, McLuhan, linguist, liquid modernity, Bauer, also our time is liquid, it's fluid, it's just uh, very much, and uh, Bertman talks from novice culture. We are looking all the time for something new. The world offers us an artificial intelligence, it's a new challenge, it's a big challenge of our time. Or we are living in a hurried culture. We never have time, it's in today. We have to rush, we have to eat very quickly, we have to come here quickly. No, no time to solve problems, no time to be together, no time to be relaxed, no time to, 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 to be bored. You know? I think many invention of human kings kind come out because humans were bored, just bored. I think we need to be bored <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so, and uh, in our time, there's a very, very huge challenge uh, is related with generative tools like chat, chat GTP that uh, has, there are many advantages, but also disadvantages. I think we, during the conference, we will have a lot of time to talk. Uh, I just made a summary here, can improving uh, uh, health care, build safer cars, learning languages, uh, support teachers, of course, there are many advantages, but there are potential risks to them of overuse. We trust too much on artificial intelligence. Is real intelligence, or it is perhaps just algorithms, and, uh, 
uh, gas. Um, and many, some people said actually democracy is not much related with artificial intelligence. If we think uh, about uh, critical, critical thinking, for example, or creativity, artificial intelligence has some problem. So um, the problem is that we need to know the positive, the risks, uh, and the negative factors. So the risk uh, factors and opportunities. So that's why my opinion, I, I think it's easy to tell it here, but I, I, I promise you I tell that also in the medicine, we do working together in the healthcare, so medicine, and then the economic field, in the, <clears throat> also heuristic field, we said the central point must be education today. We are living in a big misunderstanding because we talked, oh, the education was important in time of dictator. You know, I know the goal, I just have to learn a little bit method I bring to there. It was intended a bit a kind of uh, manipulation. Democracy, we need to be free, we need to follow the heart, we need to follow the instinct, but I don't think uh, it's like that. I think today we need much, much more education than before. And we need also to develop some competences to cope with these known challenges and issues. As I, I have here summarized some of, uh, but I am thinking going very fast here, of uh, advantages of um, artificial intelligence. There's uh, the ability of summarize long books with, in a very short space of time. Literature review can be made very, very quickly. Sometimes I, in my, in my time I spent a lot so to find the book it was difficult because I had to go in the library. Not an online, but online. Generating literature also is um, so the um, chat GTP at SSD literature generating capabilities with short time span. Translation, we had this morning, translation is important with some, of course, limits, but it's a big help even today on the table. I can understand the Meru in Korea very quick, I can read in English or in Italian or whatever. So, um, they, they can help, they can help by exams, few students, uh, they can identify students' uh, needs early, personalize learning experience, we saw that uh, this morning with the language uh, learning, so with their own rhythms, and also by grading and assessment, it can be from great help, it, um, especially if we have many, many students, and, uh, what is uh, in Italy at least, today. The case. Um, so, data analysis, prevention of uh, cybercrime and cyberbullying, for example, cataloging, directing, you know, they can make a kind of screaming artificial intelligence. So, uh, they can then um, refer a patient to specialists in the medicine and also material design and material generation. But, in the meantime, I hope I am not too fast, but you, have many, you will have many opportunities to reflect on that. There are many risks, as I said. First of all, cheating. As a, uh, students can uh, cheat in an online assessment, exam, or a text submission sometimes, so we don't know if it was a real made from students or not. Uh, creating beers, and know, um, who know about the information, that uh, artificial intelligence is, and uh, we don't know which information we are putting in, in it. And it might be there are also some stereotypes, and uh, this uh, could be very dangerous. And uh, can, so because of this, because of data are also not updated at uh, all sometimes, uh, the answer could be incorrect. Uh, it could be related to the past, then the present. Sometimes a legal issue we had. Copyright, for example, we put the test in, but sometimes it's not good. Where does it come from? And also ethical issue. Now, we don't know if there is uh, not just a stereotype that could be hidden racist, racism sometimes, discrimination, and so on. So it's like a tool. No, it's not just positive. <clears throat> but the fact is, the fact is that uh, Artificial intelligence and the chat GTP generate new challenges 
in education, teacher and educator can take advantage of its positive aspect by using this emerging paradigm, for example, by performing cognitive, cognitive skills such as production, analysis, and this synthesis of information. Um, but it can also have some negative impacts. Uh, so, so we need, and we said some of the negative impacts, so we need to, to implement some original, some original Monsieur Fuavo in the harmful effect of artificial intelligence. So, again, we do need education. I don't think that in artificial intelligence, sorry if you remark this, can do education. Sorry for the mark, but I know in English uh, it's used the word training. As Italian, we don't like the word training because uh, the word training refer more to sport. You know, it's not a real. We said formazione, which has a very long philosophical tradition. It's not just make a form, but uh, help somebody to take the form that they want, but not alone to help them. But I don't know the form that they will have. You know, help to help, or what in English we say empowerment. This is the main area. Uh, so that, that's, uh, in my opinion, we should change the word training with education. Education is much more uh, if we don't want to use formation. So, and we need the education, we need some competences. And I am not uh, the only one, I am perhaps the last one to say, the European Parliament say that, UNESCO in many conferences, so it's working in the field of, they call that global competence, I'm okay with that, we call that intercultural competence. So you see, we need to acquire intercultural competence. But what, what does it mean, the word intercultural? Uh, we, now I would need perhaps two hours to you know, develop the topic a bit to clear the difference between multicultural and intercultural. So please excuse me, I will do very shortly. And I will refer just to European study, European studies, and the European besides the UK, because of the English-speaking countries, they just prefer more to use the word multicultural. So what is the meaning of intercultural education in Europe? First of all, I would say it's a real Copernican revolution. It's not just a word, intercultural, but it's a uh, paradigm wechsel, Rodman and German say, you know, is a way of thinking which has changed. First of all, how we see identity. We cannot say, ah, you are Korean, you are Chinese, you are Japan, you are, because those are national status. This is something static. Human beings are dynamic. We are changing always our identities. How can we define? Even if somebody asks me, ah, who are you? Ah, you are Italian. It is very difficult for me because I was born in Sicily, which is different than I in Verona where I am living. I studied in Rome, then I worked in Germany. I like, I love traveling. Now I am back in. So I cannot define my identity nationalistic. That is, I think, it's really a big, big error. Identity changing all, all the time. You should be aware. Also, the world, we should change the world in something dynamic. Second one, we had already this in the discussion, diversity is not an exception. Also the dean said that diversity is part of our life. His life is based on diversity, not on community between one man and woman. Of course, there's a big cultural diversity, sometimes more than uh, related to nation, uh, between different languages, different uh, religion. Now from you know, oh, oh. I thought it was okay. Because I have half an hour. Yes. We need a I started ten to yes, I started ten to two. Yes. Ah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. So and so the intercultural approach goes beyond the European because the multicultural approach which said we need to know and to respect diversity and goes beyond the transcultural approach, which means we need uh, general rules, we need a general uh, understanding in the world, and add on top of this the opportunity of meeting, you see, encounter, dialogue, confrontation, conflict resolution, because conflicts are normal, and interaction. Inter means interaction. So education must be related 
with interaction. If and when possible, not always, we should go beyond just knowledge and respecting. Respecting is good for sociology, but not for education. Now, because of the time, this is some uh, publicity uh, with my friend Carl Grant. He is Marticato, I am Tecato, but we are still friends. And I hope also with my colleague. <laughs> <friend. And, laughs> we did many research. So you see, this is the first one on intercultural competence, but I present you the last one. This is the last research. You will be surprised. So, in the last, re re the first one was the West. Uh, uh, West-centric thinking, you know? knowledge, attitude, and skills. Those are the competent box, box, box. You know? We went back to the Eastern, ancient Eastern culture related to Korea, to China, to Japan, but I see today is different. In the yin and yang concept, this is much more related to intercultural approach, yin and yang. And also the chakras, also the chakra concept. We are not just head. We have many, many parts, and we need to develop all those competences you know, uh, uh, from the different chakras. And you say, perhaps we don't have much time, it started, and all these competences are related. You know? There is not a difference between foreigners and uh, people that are living in the country, between day and night, between bad and good people, you see. And we have seven, seven different chakras. They are related uh, to the heart. So we need to be aware of the reality where we are living. This is part of education, not just every, but very really rooted, you know, also with your identity. Yeah? And then it's the sexuality, which is taboo, but we need to take into consideration this field, which is also with this thing. Then it's aggression in the stomach. What do we do today with aggression? We know much better to cope with passive aggression. Yeah? To, to make bombing, to, to don't say anything, to boycott, but we need to cope with it. Then it's the hell. And it's emotion. It's so important for your students, for us, it's so important. Why we just dedicate time on the head? You know? We need to develop all this field. And then it's the truth, communication, which is, of course, language, but not just language. Communication is so nonverbal communication, paraverbal communication. We can communicate it in many, many times. Then it's here, the trail type, which is not just knowledge. Of course, knowledge is important, but it's also intuition in the Eastern tradition. And then it's the divine. Today we are not allowed to because we mix uh, the one with religion, but it's not like that. It's important. No, it's a, a big, big conception of the world. Uh, I think my time is almost finished. Okay. I don't know because I had a different. So those are the characteristics. You can see this. A couple of more minutes. Mm -hmm. Can I take a couple of more? Okay. Then you can see that we can use, of course, this uh, intercultural competence in a few coping with artificial intelligence. Okay. I can show you. Perhaps you see the heart. What I say. No. The development of body, culture, and personal identity to build build stable relationship, and I have a lot of stereotypes stereotypes I'm sorry, against North America because it, it's a wonderful culture, but it's very very individualistic. Mediterranean culture, Asian culture, they are collectivistic. We need to build the relationship. We can grow just in relationship. Also important, you know? relationship and, and there must, must be possible also stable and you see in the water as I said is the impulses and then the emotions the centralization and positive relationship in the hair language and communication as I said okay cultural dynamic process in the light and then the divine, no? to think about the own belief system and the belief system of the own. Okay, in conclusion, so that I don't take too much, in global, multicultural and interdependent societies, there is a disparate necessity, in my opinion, and urgency, to be aware of the new challenges that artificial intelligence and chat GDP create in education, and to acquire intercultural competences if you're facing its risk and also its opportunity. So globalization 
and intercultural competence collocated also all at the same board. Education, teaching and formation, not training, should worldwide help building intercultural identities and should help teachers to acquire um, intercultural competence through driving student autonomy, creativity, living together and coping with conflict, basically. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.